Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're talking chalk and I'm gonna share my top tips for getting the most out of your decorator chalks and chalk pastels for card making and art journaling or any other mixed media project you want to attempt. Chalks come in many different styles. They are made by many different manufacturers and they come at many different price points. So I'm gonna share the ones that I like the most and give you some affordable options. This is one of the cards I made using some of the techniques I'm gonna show you today. And all of the vintage images we're gonna be coloring today are from Crafty Individuals and provided by our sponsor, topflightstamps.com. I'll share a coupon code and links to the products that I used in the video description. Some of the techniques we're gonna to do today require water, so make sure you stamp your images in a waterproof ink before you begin, and use a nice smooth cardstock. The chalks I use the most and recommend for their versatility and affordability are chalk pastel sticks. And this is, was an inexpensive set. I think it cost around 10 or $15 and it has 48 colors. And I will link up either this set or a very comparable one below. I like this because you can sketch with them like regular pastels. You can use them with um, various applicators and you can pretty much do just about everything that I'm gonna show you how to do today with just a simple set like this. So if you don't have any yet, it's a great option. But there are cases where you wouldn't want a set like this due to space constraints or maybe because you're traveling with them. If you often travel to craft, you may prefer some decorator chalks like this. They come in their own individual plastic containers and they cost under a dollar each. These are really popular for ceramic artists and doll makers because if one cracks and breaks, it's not going to ruin all the other ones and you can still use it even if it crumbles into a few pieces. So this is perfect if you like to craft on the go and your bag might get jostled around. This is another great kit for traveling. You don't get a lot of material in there, but the colors are very trendy. It's more designed for art journalers that like to do a lot of art journal faces, and it's a brand new product from Jane Davenport. This is a really handy set, but it is a little dicey for traveling with. I had a similar set like this that I used to keep in my scrapbook bag, but one or two of the pans cracked and it made a mess of my bag. So um, I would advise if you're gonna travel with a kit like this, carry it separately from your bag just to make sure it doesn't get dropped or bumped. And another affordable option would be some inexpensive eyeshadows. This cost about $15 at Target and uh, those bright colors are super saturated and perfect for doing these chalk effects as well. So if you don't have any pastels but you got a set of old eyeshadows you don't care about, then use those instead. This next product is not a chalk, it's a mica powder, but you can use it in the same way of a lot of the techniques that I'm gonna show you today. And on black paper, it is absolutely outstanding. So uh, consider trying this or some loose mica eyeshadow if you want to get some really great colors on black. Lastly, pastel pencils can be a wonderful tool for those who want to get a little more detail and keep their fingers clean. Um, this is a very inexpensive set from Generals. It can be found at your big box department stores or online for about $10 a set, and they really perform as well as some of the really expensive artist quality ones. You have many options when it comes to blending your pastels. I like to use a variety of different things and most of them can be found around the house. One of my favorites for large backgrounds is to use cosmetic sponges just folded in half. You can get several surfaces out of one cosmetic sponge so you can use multiple colors at once. I get mine at the Dollar Tree in a package of about 75, I think, for a buck. Cotton balls and cotton swabs are great too. These pointed ones are great for getting detail or for covering larger areas. Now these are from the Dollar Tree as well, though one end has a flat paddle applicator, kind of like an eyeshadow applicator, and the other one has a pointed cone tape applicator. You could also use a regular cotton swab for this. They are just fantastic, and if they get too grimy, you can just toss them away. These wooden peg style applicators are from Doris and they're very inexpensive. They've got a thin layer of foam on the top and they're great for spreading backgrounds and also doing some detail work. I find these are also great for using with your ink pads for coloring. One of my favorite tools though is this a double-ended blender pen. This is a Stampin' Up! one, but um, Tombow makes one as well. Basically, it is a pen that is filled with kind of like a clear water-based juice. I make my own refill and what I do is I fill my water bottle, this is about a four ounce bottle, up all the way with water. I just leave a little bit of space so I can put a teaspoon of glycerin in and it's your vegetable glycerin you can get at the health food store the drug store or the craft store I pull out the nib and then I use a pipette to pull out some of the juice from the spray bottle and then I put it in the barrel of the pen and then replace the nib and then it just wets both of the nibs so it is perfect and the reason I keep it in the spray bottle is because that's also my DIY ink pad refresher so whenever my dye ink pads go a little dry I can give them a little spritz with that and revive them Another handy tool is a Versamark ink pad. It is a sticky, clear ink, just like glycerin, that you can use with your rubber stamps. You could also use glycerin on a cosmetic sponge to do the exact same thing. 
The first technique I'm going to share is a pretty obvious one. We're going to use our stick pastels to do a big background and we're going to color just like we would if we were kids in elementary school. Since I want a blue background here, I'm going to choose a light blue pa pastel. Now these chalks are much more vibrant than your chalkboard chalks or sidewalk chalks, so you might want to go a little bit lighter than you intend. You can always layer up more to get a more deep look. So I'm starting off just by putting, with very, very gentle pressure, a little bit of uh, pastel to fill in my back. Background. Don't worry if you get some on an area that you don't want because pastels are erasable until you fix them. To blend the background, I'm going to use my finger, but you can use any of the larger blending tools that I mentioned before, such as the um, peg foam blender, a cosmetic sponge, a cotton ball, whatever is going to smoothly cover that area. I find that my fingertips really lock the pastel into the paper though, and I prefer that method. Don't worry if you go outside of the lines with your pastels because you can erase it. Either use an old gift card as a template against the area you want to erase, or you can use an eraser shield, which is a thin, flexible metal um, shield that I'll show you a little bit later in the video. An easy way to color small areas is to use a pastel pencil, and you just use it like any other pencil, except you don't need to color as um, precisely as you would with a colored pencil because all of this is smudgeable. Simply add the color where you want, and then you'll want to blend it in, because if you don't, the pastel will always stay active, and it will want to smudge around. I'm using a pointy Q-tip for this, but you could use any of your tinier blending methods that you like. Remember, pastel is layerable, so you can always go and add more later if you want to add more colors or deepen the effect. I decided I wanted some yellow on the bellies of these birds, so I simply used that same Q-tip I was blending with and picked up some yellow, and then I'm adding that to each of the birds. You can truly use what you have with this project. I am using eyeshadow and my blending marker here. It's just a water-based clear marker, remember, to color in the holly in this design. Eyeshadow works just as well and just the same as using any pastel for this technique, so really use what you have. Before switching to another color, it's important to clean the tip of your marker. Simply scribble it on a scrap piece of paper until it runs clear. Then you're all set to grab your next color and continue coloring. And see, you can use all of these products interchangeably. You don't need them all, but if you do have a few different palettes with different colors, even if they're different types of chalky pastels or uh, decorator chalks, use them all together to expand your variety. You can go through and color the branches and the berries and finish up your design. Remember, you can layer over any of your elements after they dry, and chalks pretty much dry instantly, so there's no waiting around for things to dry when you use chalks. Did I mention they all work really well together? Here I'm taking some of this beautiful buttery yellow to bring up a little bit more brightness on the birds. I just basically here, I'm trying to show you that it doesn't matter what kind you have, they're all going to work beautifully together. So pick the kind that suits your needs the best. To give this a vignette look, I'm taking a stick of pastel, and you could do a pencil uh, for this as well, and I'm coloring in the edges, so I'm adding another layer of that same color I used in the background um, along the edge of my frame here, and then I'm just going to blend it out with a blending tool. This time I'm going to use the foam blender so you can see how that looks. It really doesn't matter which one you pick, just um, get comfortable with them and see what you like best. I apologize my hand's in the way, but you got to kind of hold this um, blender flush or abrupt, abrupt to the paper like that, so it does kind of make my hand go in the way. So it's not a great uh, tool for me to use on camera, but it is a really useful tool. And there, it gives you just a really pretty effect. Now I'm going to show you a really useful tool. It's called an eraser shield. And the nice thing about this is I can put it up against an edge I want to clean up. It's super thin, so it doesn't um, it, it doesn't make a gap between where you're trying to erase and where the eraser will fit. And also, all those holes in the middle of the shield, they're great for erasing out highlights for like the glint in an eye or a highlight anywhere else on your design. So they only cost um, about a dollar, and you can find them in any drafting section of um, any art supply or office supply store. To add to the vintage look of this um, vignette here, I am cutting it out with decolage scissors. And I think I've had these for about 20 years, but there's really not much of a better way to get a vintage postcard look. So if you want to make the edges appear to be um, antiqued, you can do that with a pastel very easily. All you have to do is just rub the pastel along the edge and then just blend it with a Q-tip of your finger. Now don't worry if you make a mistake like that because you can erase it. Again, the eraser shield works really well for um, protecting the area you want to protect while you erase your mistake. I prefer to smudge this with my finger, but if you want to use a Q-tip or some other tool, feel free. 
Now that you know most of the basic coloring techniques, I'm going to show you a technique to give you a more interesting background. And what I'm going to do here is stamp some snowflakes around this pretty deer within the frame with some clear sticky ink. And this is just clear embossing ink. You could also use glycerin with a makeup sponge if you didn't have a clear ink pad. Now this is a really great technique because if you ever color something and you've left your background white and you decided you wanted to have a background afterwards, you could stamp it with a clear ink right over whatever it is you colored, whether it's Copic mark or whatever, and then you can use this technique to fill in the background. I've used it lots of times and it is a super fun and uh, handy technique. So here I'm going to use the Pebbles Chalks, and this actually comes with an applicator, which is a stick with a clip on the end, and it comes with a bunch of different pom-poms to apply your chalk. You can use any kind of chalks for this um, and any sort of applicator. You just want to make sure that you dab your chalk on first and then you rub. you got to dab it on first because you want it to kind of uh, stick and dry to that ink, and then when you rub, you'll be uh, rubbing in the rest of the pastel and you'll get kind of a two-tone effect. Your stamped images will be darker and your um, just the dry paper where there was no stamping is going to be a little bit softer and lighter. It's a very subtle effect, but it's very pretty as well. And then, of course, you can finish coloring your image however you like. Remember, you can use the marker to get tiny little details and to deepen your colors up a little bit. I used a large postage stamp uh, edge scissors to cut the um, the little framed element into shape. And then to rouge the edges here, I'm using my marker on a stick of brown pastel. So you can use what you want. This gives you a little bit more of a markery looking, um, looking edge, but it's not quite as stark as a marker would look. The next technique I want to share is using your pastels as ink, basically. So you want to start off by inking up a large background stamp with your clear ink. Remember, this makes our paper really grabby for the pastel. Then you're going to take a piece of cardstock or card base, in this case here, and you're going to lay it down on the stamp. Now you could stamp right down onto the paper, but I couldn't find my really big stamp block, so I kind of had to do it backwards. And I just put a piece of scratch paper on the back so I didn't get the clear ink all over my hands because it's kind of greasy. Now I'm using a cosmetic sponge and my uh, chalk pastels, and I'm using the shimmery um, pebbles chalk because I just think it will be pretty on a background. And again, you want to dab and then rub. So that's going to lock that pastel right down onto that clear ink. And look at the beautiful design that we get. It's very subtle. It's very tone on tone. You can do this on colored paper or white or black and um, get some really nice effects. Since this is a Christmas card, I'm doing greens and reds, and um, those are going to show up really nice. Gold's also a nice color to do this with. I didn't bother adding chalk to the center of this because I knew I was going to use this uh, as a Christmas card base. So what I'm doing is I just grabbed a piece of um, pattern paper, just a scrap I had left over from last year's Christmas cards, and I am tearing the edges. So I'm going to have a pretty white deckled edge. Now you could totally color that white deckled edge with, ch with chalk if you wanted it to be kind of like a look like kind of like a burnt edge or have a different color on there. Totally go right ahead. I really like the white against the um, the colors I already have down, so I decided to use that. And we can just kind of put this card together just so you can kind of see how we can use these different um, elements in a card and how we can enhance different things with chalk. So when you are um, working on top of a chalked background like that, make sure you put plenty of adhesive down because um, that powdery chalk might keep things from wanting to stick too well. And Versa Mark ink is a little bit greasy, so that could also keep it from sticking too well. Now I changed my mind and decided I actually wanted to use the bird um, image instead of the deer one for this particular card. Now also look at your die cuts in a different way. Now this was a frame, but I thought this would make a really nice corner and then I get two embellishments for the price of one basically. So I've cut this little frame in half and that's a memory box die. Um, I'm not sure if it's still available or not. I've had it in my stash for a while and I'm just kind of using that to kind of accent um, one half of my image and now I've got that Merry Christmas. Now I I stamped that with red ink and I enhanced it with some chalk and then I did the edges with a little green chalk just like I did on the um, the elements where I showed you how to chalk the edges. You can use any of those techniques. Again, I'm cutting another die cat in half so I can um, make some little flourishes out from the Merry Christmas and I die cut that from the same scrap of red paper that I did the other piece from. That way I know it's all going to match. And also these embellishments are super light so it's not going to add extra postage. Now um, this little die it also had this little flower and I thought ooh that would be nice enhanced with some metallic chalk and also it's nice if you take those little flowers and you make them a little puffy so how I did that basically was I just put my flowers face down on a black foam mat and this is actually the mat that came with my pastels 
and I'm shaping them by kind of pressing each petal with a big round ball end tool and you can use a bead if you don't have one of those and then I took a smaller ball end tool and just did each little petal again just to help round it so basically you force the fibers in the paper to curl to your will then I pressed the front side to a um, the embossing ink pad to make them kind of sticky and then I brushed on some of the metallic pearl powder. Now you could use a chalk but the pearl powder is just going to give it more of a gleam and make it look almost uh, metallic. Then it's just a matter of gluing everything down on your card. I really think these flowers, because they're a little shiny and they're a little dimensional, give a really nice um, kind of extra touch to your card. It also keeps the weight down because they're still lightweight. And um, all it needs for an embellishment is a couple little buttons or brads or um, enamel dots or something in the center. And another thing you can do with your chalk is to tint things to match your layout. So I'm using a little sliver of paper to be the faux string in the center of my buttons. And just to make it match perfectly, I'm just going to give it a little bit of chalk. It's so easy when you use a pencil for this. I think it's kind of a perfect little embellishment. I just like the vintage image, the softness of the chalks, and the slight gleam of the metallic powder. Now I want to show you something else you can use that metallic powder for, and that is working on black. And actually you can use pastels on black too. I just want to show you the difference in the look. Now I inked up the big stamp with Versamark again and stamped it on my black paper. And um, this technique is really good anytime you have a really detailed stamp that you have a hard time getting an impression for. So it doesn't have to be just for a really big unmounted stamp. You can see there when I tip it to the light how uh, where the design is now if I didn't do anything to this I'd have a slightly tone on tone design because the greasiness of the ink kind of stains or watermarks of paper now when I brush on the loose mica powder look how shiny that is this is a pearlex powder perfect pearls is another brand that's really good and you can also use the loose eyeshadow from your discount stores just look for the ingredient mica as the first ingredient so let's compare the loose pigment powder to the other chalks that we have. So here I am using the Pebbles Pearlescent Chalk, which has a little bit of mica in it. And I found that using a lighter color chalk showed up better than using a darker color on black because there's greater contrast. Now there you can see that the color kind of disappears and all you're seeing is a little bit of the mica effect. So it's not as bold as using that um, pearlescent powder. So next I thought I'd try eyeshadow and um, I'm going to start off with a silver color color because I figured that would have the most mica in it, the most sparkle to it. And that actually showed up pretty well. It looks an awful lot like what the green pebbles chalk look like because the color just kind of disappeared uh, as soon as it hit the paper. And I thought, why don't I try the green? So I picked up a couple colors of green that had a little bit of sparkle to it. And that showed up really well. I could still see the color on the black, which is something I wasn't seeing with the pebbles chalk. So um, I think either if you don't have the loose um, eyeshadow or the loose pearl X or perfect pearls, go for an eyeshadow that's going to work really well. And and brushing it on is going to give you less um, less chalk in the background so you'll have a little bit better contrast between the stamped area and the plain area. You can also use chalk to highlight an embossed design. Now I did try one version where I put embossing ink down first and it really didn't help anything. In fact, it made it harder for these stick chalk uh, pastels to stick. So uh, starting with some pastel colors, they showed up really well against the black because it was good contrast. But then when I went with more of like a Christmas red and a Christmas green, they just were too transparent. Uh, they didn't have the opacity as the pastel colors and they didn't show up quite as well. This is a great technique, but if you do it, you're going to want to make sure to seal it with some hairspray or fix it so it doesn't rub off onto your recipient's hands or smear in your art journal. So I'd love to know what you think of the techniques that I shared with you today. What would you try first and what pastels would suit your needs best? Let me know in the comments below and if you have any questions about any of the techniques that I shared, feel free to ask and I will check in and answer them as I have a moment. This is my favorite technique for using the pastels. I like to have the big um, set of pastel sticks like this and use a water-based blending marker. For me, I feel like I get the most control and um, it's just the most convenient. And plus, you could take a setup like this and a stack of stamped images and sit down in front of the TV, maybe in front of a Christmas movie, and color a bunch of things. I want to thank our sponsor, Top Flight Stamps. If you like these beautiful vintage images that I've been showing you today, you can find them in rubber stamp form on their website. And I will link a uh, discount code in the video description for you as well. And I will also link all the resources that I use today so you can find those supplies if you are looking for them. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoy videos like this. Until next time, happy crafting.